to the topic we wanted to talk about today, which is RVing or traveling in high wind situations. Yeah, today we've got probably about 30, 35 mile an hour winds gusting to 55, 65. And we were going to be driving along some mountain ridges and through some mountain passes today. We decided it was just not going to be a safe situation. And so we were able to postpone arriving at our next destination. But it is something that every RVer has to deal with. And um, it is quite dangerous if you aren't safe about it. Yeah, um, the, there was a high wind advisory issued for this area and they shut down some of the passes for permitted loads and we just decided that it's just, it's just not worth it because we are a high profile vehicle. Fifth wheels, travel trailers, and motor homes all have a lot of service area on the side of the RV and uh, I did a quick calculation just to kind of give you an idea of how much force is, can be put on the side of an RV at 90 degree angle. Uh, with our RV at 33 feet long, fifth wheel, um, a 65 mile an hour wind gust will actually put over 3,000 pounds of side load force on our RV. And when you're going down the road with all the dynamics of everything going on, that can very easily cause you to lose control, be pushed into another lane, or in worst case, actually tip over. Yeah, you've probably all seen the horror photos online of what can happen in a bad situation with RVs and wind. So. We like to try to avoid that if at all possible. Yeah, if we had to be there tomorrow, we probably would have waited till later today. tonight or to, today. We had to be there today. We probably would have waited till later tonight to, to drive because the winds are supposed to come down a bit. But we we just try to avoid it if we if we can. We've driven in high wind situations before, um, and you know we can we can do it okay in thirty mile an hour winds ish. You know it's not fun. But there have been times where we have pulled off and waited for the weather to calm down. And sometimes roads get shut down. We were out in the Delmarva Peninsula. The, uh, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge tunnel system was shut down due to high, vehicle, high profile vehicles. Cars could travel, but we couldn't. Um, and we've seen that a handful of times, certain bridges and things like that, just because it is so dangerous. Uh, we've been out in North Dakota in insanely high winds along the coast. And yeah, sometimes we pull off just because it's, it's not... It's not worth it. There was one time in Michigan where we actually had a tornado warning for the area and we pulled off into a big parking lot and just <laughs> actually well, took a nap for a couple hours and waited for the wind storm and to pass. It was crazy high. That was uh, thunderstorm type winds. But yeah, it's definitely worth it to wait in those types of situations as well. It. I don't think it really matters between travel trailer, fifth wheel, or class A. We don't have any class A experience, but we have talked to a few people. In fact, just recently, and these winds talked to somebody who was saying he was getting pushed three feet back and forth, you know, across the road, and he couldn't control it because of the crazy winds. Yeah. Um, so I, they're, they all can be dangerous. Uh, travel trailers especially can be concerning because they are more susceptible to sway than a fifth wheel, mm -hmm. um, especially high, the taller ones. Uh, I think something like an Airstream would probably be less susceptible because it's shorter and more aerodynamic. But we have met people who have flipped Airstreams. We have, yeah. I type so, in Airstream high wind, I'm sure you'd see yeah. nasty pictures. So. so across the board, regardless of what you're driving, if you've got high winds, you know, it's 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 dangerous and you gotta be smart about it and you gotta ask yourself, is it really worth it? Getting really, there today. The only thing you can do is is pull off the road because you just don't know how the winds are going to hit you. We've come mm -hmm. around around the curve of a mountain and all of a sudden massive side wind and you yeah. just it is out of nowhere. It's like it's like an accident waiting to happen every turn and yeah. it, it can be really terrifying. I think it's a really good point you brought up there. It like the it's not just driving down the road and getting hit, you know, from one direction constantly. You you pass by trees and buildings and you go through like little valleys or things and, and the wind changes as it goes around those and we actually just heard a story about a uh, class A yeah. that was passing in, in the mountains in, in the crazy mountains. weird winds and it was passing a semi truck in one of those you know hills on both sides situations and some sort of crazy air pressure popped the front windshield off, they think. They That's think how it, it happened. popped the windshield off, 60 mile an hour wind in the guy's face, he lost control and crashed into a river. And this was a nice, uh, like a Monaco Diplomat or some fancy RV. So, I mean, 
wind can be very dangerous. <laughs> it can be very for, strong. Yeah, for any any situation. So we just chose to not drive today. <laughs> and our best advice to you is do not drive in high winds. Uh, I'd say like 30 miles an hour and above are probably the max that you'd ever really want to be in in a high profile vehicle. Yeah. And on top of that, if you drive in high winds, I mean, depending on which direction the wind is coming from, your fuel economy just goes, you know. Plus, it's forward. right behind you. We've seen like yeah. 40 miles per gallon towing this RV when we're getting pushed. True, but, but how often is it, you yeah, know, lined up perfectly? A lot right of times, you? you know, today we would have 35 mile an hour headwinds. We're already towing 60 miles an hour. Then the truck feels like it's towing over 100 miles an hour. And we have a huge surface area on the front of this thing. So it puts a lot of stress on your vehicle and your fuel economy massively suffers. So uh, another reason to try to avoid winds. Of course, when we were crossing North Dakota, there was no way to avoid a direct west <laughs> westerly headwind because that's just the way it blows all the time. Although if you remember, we were going west and then we took a jog up to the north. And as soon as we turned north, the wind started coming from the north. <laughs> It's just what happens when you're driving yeah. a big, big vehicle. <laughs> wind moves with you. Another thing to consider with winds, are, uh, even if you're in a large vehicle or a small vehicle, is just to be concerned with other big vehicles on the road. I'm sure we've all seen, you know, semi trucks kind of like swaying and moving drastically. And a lot of that is you may not feel it in a small vehicle, but in a big vehicle, you will feel it for sure. Yeah. And uh, be cautious of other large vehicles when you're in windy situations. Uh, so I think our best our best advice is just to avoid it if you can. Um, but uh, or drive very carefully when you have to. Yeah. But do also know what you're towing. Uh, like the high profile travel trailers are probably the most dangerous. Um, second to that, fifth wheels. We have a dually truck, so we have a lot more stability, which really helps out. And we feel pretty stable, but a lot of times I'll look back and the RV is still bent into the side. And you're like, ooh, that's, yeah. that's, that's scary. So nerve wracking. Let's just, let's just not, let's just not chance it. So long story short, we're staying here one more night. And then tomorrow, once the winds are all died down, we're going to head further south to Palm Springs, where we've got quite quite a fun week planned. We've got a lot of other full-time RV friends that we're going to be meeting up with, which is exciting. Not to mention we're going to be in warmer uh, terrain <laughs> with uh, hot springs in the desert we're hopefully going to go check out. and uh, None of, No more of the snow stuff. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to be meeting up with some friends. Maybe we'll invite them on the show next week Yeah. or in the coming weeks because after that we're heading to Quartzsite, Arizona where we're going to meet up with a lot more full-time RV friends. So. Yes. It's going to be some good times. Yeah, so stay tuned the next couple of weeks. We're going to have some fun content to share with you with all of this collaboration and fun to be had. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, we would love to have your subscription. So click the subscribe button and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.